The Black Panther has become one of Marvel's most recognizable superheroes, and this Friday, he'll be the focus of his own feature MCU film. But before you head to theaters, I'll teach you everything you need to know to begin your own adventure as T'Challa in this episode of Pop D&D. You get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. Hi everyone and welcome to Pop D&D. My name is Daniel Martinez and this is the show where I teach you how to take your favorite pop culture characters and turn them into D&D adventurers. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to turn Marvel's Black Panther into an adventurer of your very own. Whether you're taking place in the latest Tomb of Annihilation or you're on a homegrown quest, this character is going to get you started to play just like T'Challa. Black Panther made his MCU debut in 2016's Captain America Civil War. But his first appearance goes all the way back to 1966, and it wasn't even with the Avengers. T'Challa's first appearance was in Fantastic Four number 52 as the sensational Black Panther, but it would be just over a decade until the Black Panther received his own ongoing series. Now as with any D&D character, we're going to be starting off with the six basic attributes. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. Now usually you'll roll for these abilities, but as we did with our last episode, we're going to be selecting with six starting attributes. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. Now to determine how we're going to place these attribute stats, we're going to start off by selecting the Black Panther's race. Now it took me a little bit to figure out this one, but I think I settled on the right choice. We're going to be going with an elf, specifically a dark elf or drow. Now I went with this choice because of the different stealth aspects that come with the Black Panther. Traditionally drow are evil characters, but with this case we're going to be going with lawful good for the king of Wakanda. Another thing to consider with this race are the bonus attribute stats we get when choosing a dark elf. We're going to get plus two to dexterity and plus one to charisma. Choosing an elven background is also going to give us some different boosts, including dark vision up to 120 feet thanks to the drow ancestry. We're also going to select fey ancestry, which is going to prevent T'Challa from being charmed and give advantage against being put to sleep. One last ability from this are some drow cantrips that we're going to be getting. In this case, we're going to start off with the dancing light cantrip. This is going to allow T'Challa to create a lighted diversion with his abilities. So now that we have this figured out, let's take a look at what class he would be. It, this one also took me a little bit to figure out. I was trying to figure out would it be a warlord or a paladin, very fitting of the King of Wakanda. But I also figured out what went down with this character, especially a lot of unarmed fighting. And so with that, I decided to choose Monk. Monks tend to sequester themselves in conclaves and cloisters, and I figured that would be perfect for the Kingdom of Wakanda. It's a secluded nation that has survived despite very little reach from the outside world, and that works for the sake of the monks. Now, Dexterity is going to get a plus two, so we're going to use that 15 and put it there, giving us a 17 Dexterity. With Wisdom being our second highest, we're going to use the 14 that we gain naturally and place it there. The 13 we're going to put into our Charisma spot with a plus one bonus from being a Drow, giving us a total of 14. Our remaining stat blocks are going to go into Intelligence, Strength, and Constitution. I chose Intelligence over Strength because although T'Challa is a superhero, he doesn't have enhanced strength the way that Captain America does. So with that, it made sense to go with Intelligence for our 12. Lastly, we're going to put that 8 in Constitution. It will give us a lower health modifier, but it is going to continue to increase, and we're going to be okay because of different abilities we get from being a monk. Let's actually talk about those abilities right now, and they're going to help out with the fact that we have a low Constitution and low Strength. By choosing a monk, we get Unarmored Defense and Martial Artist added as features for the Black Panther. Now, traditionally, the Black Panther has his Vibranium Armor, but we're going to choose Unarmored to fit better with the bonuses that we're going to get. Because of Unarmored Bonus, we're going to be able to select 10 as our base AC, plus add our Dexterity, plus add our Wisdom Modifier. This brings it to a starting AC of 15. With Martial Artists, we're going to get some bonuses to our striking ability. The Black Panther tends not to use weapons, so we're going to be using an unarmed strike, and we're also going to be using the claws in his armor. With Martial Artists, we can use our Dexterity modifier instead of Strength to use Attack Bonus and Damage Bonus with both Unarmed Strike and our claws. In this case, Unarmed Strike is going to get a plus 3 to attack. 
It's also going to deal a minimum of D4 plus 3. That's 4 to 7 damage with each strike. Adding in the claws of the armor, we'll see the same results, but we'll add slashing damage as well. Lastly, we'll select the background of the Black Panther, and in this case, we're going to be choosing Nobility, as he is, of course, the King of Wakanda. The Nobility background allows you to add History and Persuasion as skill proficiencies, plus we gain a set of fine clothes and a signet ring. This is perfect, of course, for the Ring of the Black Panther. Now, with our other bonuses that we get from choosing a Drow and a Monk, we're going to get skill proficiencies in Acrobatics, Perception, and Stealth. We're also going to get saving throws in both Strength and Dexterity. Lastly, we're going to add in the Hit Points, which in this case is going to be 7 every level. We're going to get 1d8 plus our Constitution modifier. So that's it for the Black Panther. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the movie and if you built this character as well. And for some recommended reading, I suggest checking out The Wedding of Storm and the Black Panther. It's a perfect read for right now. It's a one-shot issue, but it takes place during the Civil War in Marvel Comics. In it, the Marvel heroes all come together for a moment of peace during their Civil War standoff. It's incredibly timing considering the peaceful march that we saw with the Korean teams coming together during the opening ceremonies of the Winter Olympics. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys for another episode of Pop D&D.